I'm here with Tammy Hahnemann, and last week we talked about the safety precautions you need to take for enameling. Today we're getting to work. We're getting to work. Let's get to it. I love it. So with enameling, I'm gonna kind of run through what we're gonna do, then, we're, then we'll get our gear on. Okay. And I'll show you. So, Sounds good. So um, with enameling, we use sifters to take the powdered glass to coat the metal. And then we move that to the trivet. But, and then I will clean up the enamel so that it's not everywhere. And so okay. then, we'll, then we'll get to that next level. Okay. You ready? Sounds good. Okay. I'm gonna gear up, you get yours on. I can never figure out the best way to put on these double masks. Okay. You're good. And your glasses? Ready. Ready. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. How do you know how much enamel, when we're done, you'll tell me, <laughs> how do we know how much enamel to put on the copper? Okay. Okay. So that's a very good question. Um, and I would normally do a little bit more, but just for the sake of an example, mm -hmm. I just put on a thin coat. Uh, this will actually be our first coat, so it will be um, what we'll call the counter enamel. So I'm just going to ignite the torch. <laughs> there we go. All right, you want to come in from underneath. And because the enamel is a particle, it will want to kind of blow a little bit from the heat of the torch. So I will just go in a little bit slowly. I'm gonna come up underneath and heat it. So when the enamel is being heated, it'll go through a few different stages. There'll be what they call the sugar stage, so it looks like sugar, and then orange peel, and it really looks like it, you would imagine for it to be called orange peel. And then it'll go to a full fuse. And you really can watch the whole, there it goes, sugar, orange, and then once it's fully shiny, it's full fused. It's amazing. Or fully fused. <laughs> and I'll stop there. Okay, and now just remember this torch tip is very hot, so you want to turn it away from you. And then I tend to then go into the next piece, and what I'll do is just kind of take my tweezers and move that carefully off to the side, and then I'll start again. Okay, so. And I'll so do another one. So now um, we'll be done with the torch. So how, how many layers would you normally do on this? Okay, so the counter enamel is your first layer. And so that, this is on the back? This will be what will become the back when you're torch firing. So this will actually then not be as pretty <laughs> once you're done, because now you're gonna actually build your pretty stuff on top. And so you'll do your next layer. And because we fire from underneath, your counter enamel is going to get that sooty appearance. Darker. Yeah, darker. It's not horrible. It's just not going to be what you want your finished surface to t typically be. Um, and then the other thing about that is your counter enamel is what's going to balance the tension and, your, and the stress in your metal. So that prevents cracking of the glass. Mm -hmm. Exactly. You got it. You got it. So that's really, it's kind of uh, physics related, which... Uh, not my thing, but it does make sense when you put it all together and understand why you're doing certain things. So the thicker the counter enamel, the thicker your top layer can be. So depending on how many layers you want to build in your design work would then dictate how thick you want to have your counter enamel be. Well, it really is the science of jewelry. Yes, it, it is. is. It's science. I think it's fascinating. Yeah. Let's take a quick peek, too, at those pieces that you brought oh. in the front here that show kind of the next level 
yes. of what you can do. Yes, so the sifter that I use, there's bigger ones, and then there's even smaller ones, and then the smaller ones I was able to then utilize to create some of that finer detail on those pieces. You can also use a stencil, you can put decals. I mean, there's so many different things that you can then take from what you probably already have around your studio and apply to your stencil work. We just have a minute left, and you had mentioned finishing. Yes, so when you are finished with your jewelry, you can assemble it, but if you find that you've made a mistake or you have some pieces you need to remove, there are tools. Um, these are London stones and then glass brushes that will help you clean up any mistakes that you have so that you can actually have a perfectly finished piece. Oh, nice. Well, you brought a ton of finished jewelry. These are so colorful and beautiful. I want to make sure we take a look. Yeah, really I love fun. the color. Let's start out with the bracelets. So those are just some donuts, donut-shaped metal and formed into uh, a pendant almost, but then used in a bracelet instead as a link. And then um, the earrings, there are a ton of different things happening here. Lots of tassels and fringe. Chain really fun. and sparkle. Yeah, yeah gotta, gotta dress them up. And then make it fun. And I love the washer bracelets. Those are fantastic. Thank you. Simple. Simple, leather, a couple cord ends, you're good to go. Well, and those are perfect when you want to give a gift that has a color meaning. Mm -hmm. You know, I really like, and I know you love that too. It's giving a gift with a color meaning is a lot of fun. Yeah. All right, well, tell us about these necklaces. This one's really beautiful, this green one here. So again, with the tassel, with this one done in leather, and then similar with the chain and the, the crystals, um, really just playing on a color palette and just having fun with that. And then the, um, the seahorse, obviously the nautical theme there. We're going uh, a little bit of beachy. <laughs> and that, the, um, the fish is more uh, ceramic, but I thought the colors worked really well together. So just designing the piece, pulling together different components and just having fun with it. Well, and the idea of taking a piece like that fish, finding something like that from an artisan, and mm -hmm. then making your own artistic components to go with it. Yep. I think that makes it really special. And the other piece is cool too. I love the way that mm. this is like a representation of Tam's enamel stash right there. Yeah, here. that's right. <laughs> I'm sure you have more than this. <laughs> I, I do, I do. But I, lo I love that piece. I um, really just have always grown to like resonate with that. All that color and the layers and then the way they kind of play together. And creating a color palette is so fun. <gasps> yeah, love it. I love it too. Well, thank you so much. Thank you.